Welcome back everybody to another Moto Bob video. Now this week, Royal Enfield unveiled their brand new Shotgun 650 with a special limited edition finish which will be just a run of 25 bikes. The thing is, it does give us a really good idea of what to expect from a full production version which surely will follow hot on its heels. And so in this video, we'll go through the eight key things that you need to know. Number one, of course, is that this bike will use their 650 parallel twin, which you may well have deduced from the name. This is a fantastic little engine. It's already been a big success in their Interceptor Retro, the Continental GT Cafe Racer, and most recently in the Super Meteor Cruiser. And so it's safe to say you can expect more of the same here. It's about 47 horsepower, which is just enough to have some fun on the road, plenty of old school air cooled character, and also a great soundtrack from that 270 degree crank. As for the chassis, well, it doesn't look a million miles away from the Super Meteor with a pretty laid back and slack cruiser style geometry. You can see there's a tubular steel frame that wraps around the side covers and it's suspended on a chunky upside down fork at the front, twin shocks at the rear. And so again, very much like the Super Meteor 650. Wheels are cast aluminium and 10 spoke with an oversized 19 incher at the front and braking comes in the form of two pot calipers, both front and rear. And it looks like the same 320mm disc up front as the Super Meteor and the big 300mm disc at the rear which is typical of the cruiser genre and gives you plenty of stopping power on the rear brake pedal. Now it's not super top spec premium stuff on this bike but the Super Meteor did impress me with its handling and it's a nice nimble option versus some of the heavier cruisers on the market. So I reckon this bike should be pretty close in terms of handling and that should be one of its strengths. Where the two bikes sort of diverge though is with the finish. With the the Super Meteor being quite classic and traditional looking, whereas the idea with this shotgun is more so rooted in the custom scene. In fact, Sid Loud, the MD at Royal Enfield, said the objective was to build this modular shape-shifting machine that's almost like a mutant disguised as a motorcycle. Mark Wells, chief of design at Royal Enfield, also added that after they'd shown the SG650 concept at Eichmer in 2021, it gathered huge interest from international custom builders and got heads turning. So so much so, they decided to build it as a production motorcycle. The Shotgun 650 Motoverse Edition, that's this particular limited edition, is built by the same team that designed the SG650 concept, and therefore it's remarkably close to the concept, much more so than is usually possible. It retains the cast aluminium nacelle, chopped fenders, angular bodywork, and that confident, aggressive stance. At the heart of this motorcycle is the simplicity of its form and the pure metal composition that is testament to its inspiration, custom culture. He then says the Shotgun 650 offers a perfect canvas for experienced builders, as well as someone who is just starting on their journey of customization. Now, comparing the shotgun side by side with the Super Meteor, you can see the shapes are a little harder. The side panel and the tank have a bit more of a squared off edge to them. And also that rear mug guard is a little bit shorter, which gives it a bit more of a sporty look. Then you've got the headlight nacelle that they mentioned up front for a bit more of that custom cruise style and the entirety of the hardware on this bike is completely blacked out and so there's not a single piece of chrome on show and personally I think I prefer it. Now this limited edition paint job looks really good to me as well. I really like the blend of light blue through to black on the tank and also the pops of neon yellow on the graphics and on the rim tape that really do give it that modern lift that differentiates it from the Super Meteor. So overall, quite a cool looking bike. Definitely some of Enfield's best work in my opinion in the styling department. And it's also great to see them do something a bit more contemporary because they've had to rely for so long on that sort of heritage image. As for the ergonomics, well, it does look a little more sporty than the Super Meteor, so the bars are further forward and a bit lower. Foot controls are in a sort of mid position as opposed to further forward. And in these pictures, you can also see it in its solo seat setup. So it looks a bit more like a bike that you can muscle around a bit as opposed to the more laid back, chilled out style of the Super Meteor. One of my favorite features on this bike, though, has to be that rear section. So like I say, you can run it with a clean solo setup, but you can also add 
add in a rack if you want to carry some luggage. And then on top of that, you can apparently quite easily fit on a passenger seat. Now, to me, it definitely looks the best without the rack or seat, but I just think it looks really well thought out and it's nice to have those more practical options quickly at your disposal. Now, tech wise, we did get a decent shot of the cockpit in the press kit and it looks very similar to the Super Meteor. So pretty much the same speedo, which is sort of part analog, part digital. And from my experience of using it, really easy to read and nice to use. The switch gear also looks very familiar. And then off to the right of the dash, you've got their tripper navigation pod. Now this hooks up to the Royal Enfield app on your phone over Bluetooth. And that means you can plot a route and then you'll get turn by turn navigation prompts right there on the little pod in the cockpit. So it looks super neat. Otherwise, it is pretty simple. There's ABS, but not much else. But then again, that's pretty much all you need on a bike like this. And you do get LED lighting all round, which does finish it off quite neatly. So who's going to be buying one of these? Well, perhaps anybody who likes the fundamentals of the Super Meteor, but perhaps found the styling a little bit stuffy. Or if you're a fan of something like the Triumph Bobber or the new BMW R12, but maybe they're way out of budget with each of them starting at about 12 or 13 grand. Also, the shotgun makes a natural direct competitor for the Kawasaki Vulcan S and the Honda Rebel 500, both of which do the sort of cruiser thing, but with modern styling quite well. So that price will be key on this one. And with this being a limited run, there's no indication of the final pricing for a production version yet. But the Super Meteor is excellent value for money at just under seven grand for the most basic paint options. And so I wouldn't expect this shotgun 650 to be massively different given that it's almost the exact same spec if anything, a little simpler in the finish and components. So it looks like it could be a great bike and like they say, popular with customizers because it's not so expensive as a starting point. But as always, I'd love to know what you think of it. So do let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you haven't seen my comparison of the Super Meteor and Interceptor 650, which I shot earlier this year, then I'll put it on the screen now. Really enjoyed shooting this one, so do check it out. Also, hit subscribe if you've not already, if you want to see more of the latest motorcycle news right here on YouTube. Many thanks for watching today, and we'll see you in the next one.